Good morning, friends. And Darren Ragnall is the first one in the chat. Hey, Darren, would you like to hop in this uh, uh, unrational square table? We can talk about any kind of topic you want to. And good morning, Captain Trek. How are you today, my friend? I am going to be honest. I'm hurting, but I'm blessed. Uh, so physical pain is getting to you today? Yeah. I had a little talking to from <clears throat> someone we all know. <laughs> <laughs> someone we all know. Okay. Yeah. Kind of told <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hello, sir, says uh, 47 York Town. And good morning, says Resolute Germ. Good morning, yeah. Resolute. What's up? All right. I'm going to uh, paste the link to get in here. We'll get one more. Maybe two. Oh, yeah. Got to have bird. Kapla, bird of prey fly. Sure more. Greetings, Wesley and Captain Trake and fellow ethnic nerds. <laughs> uh, so, guys, I've got room for maybe one or two more. Why not get just kind of a little dialogue going on? Oh, we saw you. We saw you. You can't hide for, from us Shut forever. Up. Damn it. That was, I hit the wrong button. So, Going for so, the mute for a second. So someone, uh, someone uh, showed me an analogy of of grief and how how it kind of feels sometimes, but it kind of works for like pain as well. Is imagine a box, and on one side it's got a button, and whenever that button is pressed, you feel the pain, whatever it is. It's if it's grief of losing someone, or just like the stress of life going on, mm. and yeah. inside that box is is a ball. And when it when it first happens, the ball is really big, and it keeps hitting keeps hitting the button. But as time goes on, you kind of like heal. The ball gets smaller, but occasionally the box gets shake shaken up, and the ball will still hit the button, even though it's not as likely or as as often as when it first happens. It still will like randomly come back, and you'll just instantly feel that pain again. And I really like, I really like that analogy. It makes, I mean, yeah, you know, it makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually it does. You have to send me <laughs> that in a uh, in a DM because I'll need to read that over and over again. Because uh, it'll. I'll, I'll... I'll send you the link of someone made like a little Facebook post, and I'll send it to you on Discord. Good. Berta Price says working on Kroga the Brave video, maybe a little bit later if there is room. Okay, that's cool, Bird. But it, uh, Bird's listening, and Yosef is here. Yosef, let's see here. It is oh. evening, isn't it? So, uh. Yosef and everyone else, I've got enough room for maybe one or two more. I wanted to have a little dialogue back and forth. What I wanted to talk about is what is what is your worldview or what is your beliefs? What what do you what what do you what do you hold to and why? So it could be it could be atheism, it could be Christianity, it could be Buddhism. You can believe that uh, we're just a terrarium of advanced aliens and they're just watching us. I mean. <laughs> You know, whatever it is you hold to, I, I want to know about it. And let and I don't want like anyone to be judging on any anyone else. But I feel like at least the people that come to my stream are part of the tight community that watches anti tracker and bird. And we've see each other on the same streams, you know, every day of the week. We know each other's names, but we don't really know each other as people. And Ramley Canuck is here. Hello, Ramley Canuck. Would you like to hop in? You always bring good discussions. In fact, I've I've been telling him he does good interviews, and I've suggested a couple people for him to interview. Uh, we have the Ramley Canuck. <clears throat> good Hello, morning. My, Hello, my friend from up north. Where the ground is white. <laughs> oh, thanks for saying that. 
See, see down here, the head uh, just walked in the door. We'll start in a few. Oh, son of a... <laughs> 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 Everyone message him that I beat him to it. Uh, if he wants to take the airwaves, that's fine. Um, Mr. Rambling Canuck, uh, did you hear the question I said to uh, Captain oh. Trank? Oh wait, I gotta, I gotta mute something. I hear myself. If you play it louder, we'll just have an echo of me going echo, echo, echo. Yeah, I forgot to mute the the YouTube. Sorry, that was my bad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna paste my link to Anti Trekker. Good idea. <laughs> that was my bad. I forgot to mute YouTube. <sighs> Happens all the time. Now it's closed, so it can't interfere. Oh. But see, I always I follow the chat along there because StreamYard seems seems to uh, screw up on the on the uh, chat area. Well, it's usually delayed as hell. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, YouTube is either like anywhere between like ten to thirty seconds behind. Yeah. I, I remember when Anti Tracker was doing a Kerbal Space Program the first couple times, and I'm like scrambling on the chat, like do this, <laughs> and he's just he's just waiting, waiting, waiting. <laughs> sure, more uh, says when I was going to counseling, I was told uh, often the situation remembers the pain, even if you don't remember and can't explain why. Oh, uh, and we have a Bird of Prey five coupla. Hello, world! It's Bird of Prey five coupla. Good morning, bird. See, I predicted exactly what he was going to say. <laughs> I think it'd be more predicting if you, if he said something different. Sometimes I say, Kapla world, it's Birdo Prey 5, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it in the Yoda voice. <laughs> Kapla, hello world, Birdo Prey 5, this is, yes. <laughs> Ooh, I like that one. Who gave uh, you a talking to, Captain Trek? Uh, I think you know. <laughs> oh, I didn't think it was that. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? I don't know. <laughs> so you mean it was me? No, it was not you. It was uh, oh. somebody else who. Then I don't know. Well, so, you know, somebody who whose whose door needs to be widened for his ego. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry. Oh, oh Ronald Ronald. Ray already guessed it. <laughs> <laughs> she, said she doesn't have any idea what it's about, but she only knows she she already guessed it. Okay. Um, My so, bad. Sorry, Wes. I didn't mean to derail you, but I was. <laughs> you fine. stopped Captain Track right when he was about to say it. I was like. Uh, I thought I was, was getting needed. I needed closure. Okay, understood. Uh, discussion I would like to have is I want to get to know each other more as people, not just oh, hey, I see a name, Captain Trek, and he says hi to me every day on the stream. Well, I want to know each other more as friends. I mean, we 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 know you pretty well, Bird, because you you let everything loose. You you, you tell us every, your whole life story, which is good, you know. <laughs> Can I ask you something, though? Me? You. Yes. Were you as open always? Either Pretty before much. you had the surgery? Um, well, let's put it this way. I was more open, but I was more shy. So I didn't really talk. I mean, at work, I had a lot of friends. I mean, I talked to people at work. But outside of work and outside, like, the same five or six people I was friends with since college... I didn't really make a hell of a lot of other friends. And before college, you know, before that, I was really shy. What? I didn't just, I, I didn't discuss things with, with the family. Right. That's what I'm no, I didn't. Okay. Yeah. I was, I wasn't, yeah, I didn't discuss a lot of things with my family, but. I told them good things. They didn't tell them about bad things. 
Well, so Mama Prey, I guess, is saying I wasn't. I wasn't as open. You're kind of keep to yourself kind of guy. Yeah, I, I get that. I think, I think a lot of us were probably like that in our, you know, either either tw teens, early twenties. You know, I guess Captain Trek. I guess since the surgery and the year in the hospital, I, I certainly lost some humility, huh? Inhibitions, humility, yeah. Yeah, I guess I just don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> so I guess, I mean, I like to think that I, I would tell people things uh, before, but I guess I, you know, I wouldn't tell strangers. Now I <laughs> Well, like my goal here is so we're not just strangers. I mean, yeah, there's always going to be personal information that we don't want to share on the internet, but anything that's not too private, Well, see that I feel the same way because there are a lot of times it's like, you know, I don't I don't share some of the stuff because it's like, well, I don't want to sound like I'm bitching about everything. You know, I've been in pain for a year, like, Ugh! you know, and I know people are going to get tired of hearing it. Well, how's your pain today? No. I hear you there. <laughs> well, well so, we, we we do all follow a giant turd that says he's in pain every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so, with Andy Trekker, I can relate a lot of the time, too. So, <laughs> Yeah, actually, I can, too. I just sit there and go, yeah, I, have, I know all about that. <laughs> I, you know, I have to admit, I kind of blew up the other day, be, and I, I allowed it to happen because I was in pain, and I didn't say, and I should have. Let me... Uh, Greetings, number one sci-fi. Greetings. Who is now a word number, not a hashtag. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I should have told you that I was just like everybody else. We were trying to be nice and not say. I didn't even realize that you couldn't type in at hashtag one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even realize that it, it wouldn't work. Yes. See, I just had to copy and paste it. It's just that that was the only way. Um, well, now that there's five of us, you know, hopefully everyone gets a chance to talk. That's, that's the little thing I don't like about StreamYards. It's like, it's awesome that we can have six of us, but then we start to get the, like, talking over each other or one person. I don't just know what you're of, talking about, Wes. We start about talking <laughs> over everybody. <laughs> or, or, like, one person just kind of, like, sitting in the corner and be like, I'm, I'm fine over here. I don't need to talk. I do that often. Well, and then there's sometimes you go, I wonder, I wish they were over in the corner and not allowed to talk. <laughs> Oops, I wish I could mute specific people. Oh, I know exactly what you mean. Yes. Can't wait. Yes. Yeah, I, I think I can. I can. No, no, I just mean if I'm if I'm listening to the stream. Exactly. As a listener. I just want to mute one or two people. Well, yeah. you, you, you type in the chat and be like, hey, everyone. <laughs> hey, Wesley, mute Bird of Prey 5. He talks too much. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Captain uh, MKG. I don't think anybody would mute Bird. Bird is always okay, entertaining. I oh, I'm, I'm picking I, on him because I, I, I know I, he can take it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can, and I understood that, so it's mm -hmm. fine. <laughs> We could do anything except for th throw you know, actual physical rocks at him and he'd be fine. <laughs> Although, like, I don't well, know. Well, we might anybody... have to worry about Mama Prey. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, she's tough. Bert she scares me. <laughs> Bert, Bert has good uh, shields that, you know, protects his uh, dignity. And he has Mama Prey as a uh, torpedo. <laughs> And sassy to clean up. <laughs> okay, now. So who's gonna go let me first? Ask you. You you have the idea. What is your what is your thing that you want people to know? What do you believe? What do you stand for, Wes? Hmm. <laughs> well, that backfired. <laughs> yeah. When the question gets turned around back on me, I'm like, hmm. Um, 
Uh, I mean, like I think I've I've said like I am a Christian. Uh, I, I try to follow the the faith as best I can. I don't really uh, go to just like one type of church or the other. You know, I I'll, I kind of like try all different types of Christianity. Mm-hmm. Um, but besides like that. I guess because of my childhood, you know, we're all nerds. We all got picked on, I, uh, or at least most of us probably, is I always try to be friendly and outreaching to, to, to people. You know, I, I try to like, what's the saying? It's like, if, if you're doing well, if you're on the top, try to re- pull someone up to you. You know, right. if you're you're having a good day, try to pull someone else up to that like good day, and that that's what I try to do. I think I think a good example is what I did for Bird is, I was like, oh, I have the opportunity to get this auto or the videotape and then the autograph, and Bird Bird can't. He said like, he has to live his experiences through us, so he wants to see us do live streams of the things we go to. <laughs> exactly. Well, and next time, as as a suggestion, first of all, take a backup battery. I had, for, pl- I had plenty of power. It was internet. <laughs> well, next time, take video, and then just do a. a then you could just uh, play it and do a uh, chat session at the same time. You could premiere it. Yeah, I, I video. Just, I didn't really know how to do that at the moment. I got to learn how to do all this better. Yeah, that 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 definitely would be a good well, idea. So like, you know, I did, it's not like uh, anybody in this uh, of of. Go ahead. This community knows how to do that stuff. Um, I did a recording of the shout out, so I knew I would have that saved. Yeah. But yeah, I should just do it like that, I guess. My, so. my personal opinion on premiering after trying it a few times is I'm against the premieres. It stops people from commenting. And when they don't comment, the more people comment, the more YouTube likes the video and promotes it. So I'm like, really the only, the only reason you would premiere it is if you were monetized and you know, you could get super chats or something. That's true. But if you're not monetized premiering, in my opinion, there's no upside. You'd rather just have those people just comment. Uh, it's better for the video. It's better for the algorithm. But I love your that. choice. Here, I'm um, going to show you. Uh, I'm going to send you a link in the uh, back room. That is a uh, church I used to go to. I, I can't now because of not being able to drive. But uh, that was that was a church I... I attended for a long time. That's mm-hmm. a particular Sunday school class, but uh, so you can check it out sometime. I like this comment from uh, Resolute Drew. Uh, worry about Momo Prey and that Tommy gun under his, his hospital bed. <laughs> so does Momo Prey keep guns under your hospital bed? <laughs> I won't no comment. comment. Yeah, no comment. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You live in New York. Don't no no comment. No comment. <laughs> if you're in Texas, you could just be like, yeah. Well, in Texas, it'd be like, uh, if you don't, you'd be shot. <laughs> in New York, mm, no New Yorker has any guns. So, no word from anti trekker I wonder if. I wonder if uh, he even realizes that I'm streaming. I sent him a link to the stream yards. Well, let's see here. He might not be home yet. No, he sent me a message because I was asking him, hey, are you doing a live, uh, you know, a Sunday? Uh, what did I say? Are you doing a rational roundtable stream? And he said, uh, just walked in the door. We'll start in a few. Well, it doesn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> a few. Oh, um, wait. What's this? Remember one sci-fi you uh Yeah, that's um the guests that are gonna be at this convention I'm gonna be going to in three weeks. 
cool. It's a, com- cool. It's a Comic Con. Wow. Uh, oh, cool! It's even showing the uh, autograph and yeah, well, uh, how much picture, it costs. Pictures, yeah. yeah. Right. So those those are the main four up top there. Of course, Sam Witwer, as you can see, it was Dark Maul's voice and Rebels. Um, and Emily Swallow is the Mandalorian armor person, and then Omid Ab Tahi is the doctor in the Mandalorian. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. But those people will be there. So yeah, I go there and basically three weeks from now is when the convention is, or the Comic Con is, whatever. And see, like Bird's not a Star Wars fan like I am. I would probably mm-hmm. want at least at least Sam's uh, autograph if, if I were there. But I've got to watch my budget, so I can't bribe you yeah, to get one. <laughs> yeah, it's forty bucks for his autograph, which is kind of high. No, honestly, that's that's not not too bad. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no, William Shatner. Then you're then you're talking high. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, William Shatner. You're probably looking at two hundred bucks now. <laughs> at least. <laughs> If At you least. had if you had William Shatner and Patrick Stewart at the same con, they'd keep up in their price just to like outdo each other, <laughs> and the fans would be like, <laughs> "They'd be paying it." They'd, I mean, have an, they'd have an auctioneer on the side. <laughs> I went I went to the Star Wars um, celebration. Um, shoot, what year was that? It was that was right before uh, the Force Awakens came out? It was like, you know, six months before it came out. And Mark Hamill was there. Uh, Carrie Fisher was there. Uh, I mean, like, uh, almost the whole cast of A Force Awakens was there. Uh, Harrison Ford was the one guy who didn't show up. And they're like, oh, uh, due to his plane crash six months ago, he's too injured to come. <laughs> Meanwhile, he filmed the movie. <laughs> um we all knew what it was. Is Harrison Ford is notorious for he can only take so much of Star Wars fans. You you almost have to like mention like oh I loved you in Blade Runner. <laughs> wait wait not not Han Solo. <laughs> well, I mean I liked him in and, what was that movie where he was in, at the Amish place or whatever it was called and he was helping that lady out there. I you remember don't... that one? I... Is anyone else? No. <laughs> no, the only second but... one would cop would be Indiana Jones. Anyways, See, that was what I was thinking. It was like $100 for Mark Campbell's autograph, and I really wanted it, but I was like, I just don't have $100. I, he I shouldn't was... be charging 100 bucks, especially... I don't think it was him. I, him I, do think it was... To him. I think a part of it is the con. I think it's like a percentage goes to the actors and the percentage goes to the convention i don't know it seems like it'd be really hard for the convention to to um count how many he was actually signing i think <laughs> probably just okay yeah it was, wit- it was, um, it was and- witness witness was the name of that movie witness oh oh yes i remember gosh i haven't and- seen that in years yeah, it came out in 1985. And I wanted to get Carrie Fisher's autograph too, and I'm now I'm really regretting that. <laughs> but the lines were long. It was like three hour line long, uh, three hour lo- long lines for the autographs, even though they were really high price. And it was like one or the other I could deal with, <laughs> the, the the money or the time, but not both. <laughs> yeah, I liked I would... him. I liked him in Air Force One as well. Harrison Ford. Oh yes. Yes, there's a lot of good movies that that Harrison Ford was in, but unfortunately, all all of us nerds just go Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Oh, he was in Star Wars. Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, Indiana <clears throat> Jones is his second most popular thing, right? Yeah. Um, uh, and I was only there for one day. So I was like, I didn't want to waste half my day for an autograph that I had to pay a lot of money. True. (laughs) Anyways, we jumped off topic, but that's fine. 
At least that's a topic. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'll be right back. I gotta grab coffee. I'm gonna minimize that screen now. Okay, I'll I'll stop sharing it. Anyone else want to kind of open up and tell us about yourself? I mean, I was, like I said, in the military for 20 years in the Navy. Um, So I retired from that. Can you give us a a time frame? Uh, Yeah, from 1988 through 2008. Okay. I was in the military in in the Navy. And... Like the video I did on the Truman reunion I had last year for the 20th year reunion of that. Um, Basically, you know, got to go back to the carrier for the first time in 20 years after leaving. And, um, you know, it was just cool to hang out with the people that I knew back then. See how everybody's changed and stuff like that. So when Darren Wagner talks about being a submariner, I can't talk. Uh, do you relate to what he says at all? Like a little bit, you know? Um, just a little bit because I mean the Navy is the Navy, but yeah, obviously a sub is going to be way more cramped and have way less um, all right. lu- luxuries than a carrier. Oh, speaking of uh, Darren Wagner, there he is. <laughs> oh, don't don't I'm tell getting, me. Where, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say I'm getting a lot of people now. All of a sudden, like, so <laughs> Cinnabon is in the background, and it was Darren, and so I, I want space for everyone. But put me in the back room. I'll, I'll drop out. I'll we've got a seat still waiting. I don't well, know. Well, before you leave there, Bert, I just wanted to Yo. say, uh, my my son thanks you for your shout out. Oh, and it, and it and you did get it right. It's Jacob. It is Jacob. I was going to yeah. ask, is it Jacob? Yeah. Or Jacob? And it was really cool because he was walking through with his friends just as you started singing "Happy Birthday" to him. Oh, so he got a whole bunch of cred because somebody on on YouTube was singing "Happy Birthday" to him. So he, he, he thought it was cool. Kids these days, I must really be out of touch. <laughs> <laughs> My day, that would have gotten me beaten up. <laughs> no, no, no. He, they just kind of looked. He's actually singing to you. What the hell? <laughs> so yeah, he got to walk around with a proud look on his face for a while. Anyway, good. good. I'm happy. To, I'm happy to hear that. That's cool. I'm gonna go back to listening mode. Then I'll talk to you guys later. Alrighty. And and a lost Cinnabon. Cinnabon, if if you're hearing this, you can come back in if you want. Uh. Great so I, so I, I come in and immediately I'm hearing stuff about submarines. That was not planned, by the way. <laughs> uh, uh, no, number one sci-fi was talking about uh, he was in the navy, yep. and I said, so when Darren talks about being, you know, do you relate at in the smallest form? I mean, I know he's in a boat above the water, and you're in a boat below the water, but yeah, you know, it's kind of funny because even though you're in the same branch you know, of the, of the military, um, within that branch, particularly the Navy, there's such a diverse time, you know, number of jobs you can do and environments you get to work in. And, uh, you know, so number one, sci-fi being a corpsman had a very different experience than I would have had. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's that. And then we have, Cinnab- what you're talking about. we have Cinnabon driving his car, smoking a cigarette, sunglasses on, thinking he's cool. Uh, well, it worked for uh, Life with Matthew, so. <laughs> <laughs> I have to kind of crank my head, though, to see who it is. <laughs> That's okay, though. So no uh, no rational roundtable today, I take it, huh? Uh, no, Antichrist said yeah, that like... he was going to be on shortly. Oh, okay. Yeah, he usually uh... starts at noon on Sunday now because he goes to church in the morning. Gotcha. So my question, and I know you've probably asked or been asked this before and answered it, uh, Wesley, is how come you decided on Wesley Crusher as your identity and avatar here on YouTube? Um, so the story goes... Uh, it's like he's coming to your channel, Wes. He just put out a notification, by the way. Oh, okay. Um, 
so when I first started watching the live streams, my YouTube account still said my real name by default. Ah, okay. Which is Wesley, and my last name starts with a C. And someone on anti Trekker stream just kept saying, shut up, Wesley. Oh. Uh, or like Wesley Crusher every single time I'd hop on. I forgot who it was. And I was like, <laughs> okay, oh, hell of it. All right. If, if, if I'm going to get that, I might as well just embrace it and use the name. <laughs> and so I, I, changed, I started off with just me changing my YouTube name. Right. And then I was then I found the picture this this picture of like older Will Wheaton with the beard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and not yeah. a beard, by the way. Well, uh, that's a lineup <laughs> <laughs> at at best. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, it, it's a good picture. It, it, it you know it, it uh, him with that's my favorite uh, television unit. Well, second favorite television uniform on of, of all Star Trek. So yeah, it, it looks like if it's Wesley and he went to Deep Space Nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I'll use this picture. Yeah. Now, on actual YouTube, I've changed my avatar picture, but. Uh -huh. Gotcha. And that's basically it. The, wasn't really a lot of thought to it, it just kind of happened. Yeah. No, I mean, I wonder that about, you know, like Admiral Saval, for example. You know, that's kind of a, even in the, in the landscape of Trek, that's still kind of an obscure character, even though he did have a major, you know, guest starring part in Enterprise. It's, it's most people wouldn't pick him as just their Apple, first. Oh, come on. Yeah. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Finally, you know, we get road guy. rage. <laughs> yes. You know. I'm one of those people who would never do what Jim is doing right now because you'd hear all kinds of really <laughs> bad stuff. You'd be like, you know, pick a lane, grandma, pick a lane, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't think that's all yeah, we'd be hearing there. No, no, you wouldn't. You'd be hearing me singing. It'd be all kinds of bad stuff, bad television. <laughs> does does any mind one mind hopping out to, so I can get anti checker up here? Yeah, sure. I'll jump off. Okay. Thank you. You are very gracious. <laughs> He's racist. What? 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 No, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Wait, who's racist? <laughs> no, I didn't. Dang. <laughs> yeah, but wait. Thank you. Gross. You're very racist. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a dick move, Wes. <laughs> no, that's not what I said. <laughs> <laughs> right. I tell you what, I got the uh, I got the Eagle Moss D four uh, battle cruiser uh, uh, model, you know, the from their standard series, and I th I like that thing, even though it's really ugly because I like ugly ships. Yeah, what is with you in ugly ships? I don't know, because I guess I guess I like ugly ships because they they have a more of a design purpose indication. You know, it's like I don't mind the beautiful ships. I love the beautiful ships too, but I also have a. Th in my heart for the ugly ones because I want to know why they're ugly. I want to know the story well, behind why they look they look the way they do. I'll like, say that that's probably why I like the Connie and the and the Miranda better than any other Starfleet ships because you look at any component on the ship and you can identify what it's for. Right. Uh, as opposed to like you, you know, what what is the point of the bloated saucer section on the Enterprise D? Yeah. But, you know and. and to hold a lot more passengers, it's 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 kind of like I find a BlackBerry, like a like a, a an old BlackBerry ninety nine thirty or something, more interesting just to look at than an iPhone. For the same way. Well, the, the funny thing about an iPhone, I mean, an iPhone, if with if, if you don't see the back of the phone, if you're just looking at the face of the phone, it is virtually impossible to determine what brand of a phone you're looking at. Yeah. You and know. I mean, yeah, it's it's just this smooth piece of metal and glass with no, right. I mean, not, you, you just look, look, I'm talking about when you look at it when they're turned off. Right. If you turn it off, you can't really tell what this thing was, especially if you showed it to somebody maybe 30 years ago. With a BlackBerry, at least you can tell, okay, there's the screen, there's this keypad, I, you know, I have this, I have some idea of what this thing might be, and I, I just find it, that's why whenever people say that, you know, the, the NX-01 was more advanced looking than the 1701 from the original series, I'm like, well, wait a minute now, you know, it's got fewer buttons, you know, it's got, you know, you compare the two images of the, of the two phones that I mentioned, and, you know, the BlackBerry is less sophisticated, but looks more complicated. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, yeah. My take on that, but yeah, I, I bought the D four and I got it here, and so then I went to Trek Yards to find out if Captain Foley had any feelings on it, and of course he hated it. 
Um, but you know, I, I actually the reasons he didn't like the reasons you know, why he didn't like it were the reasons why I liked it. Yeah. So as far as the D four, yeah, the D four the D four concept. It was right. the one that never made it to the show. It looks like a, a Katinga or a D7. It just, just has some minor changes and then also some, the re, the rigging, the reinforcement yeah, on the you, neck and stuff. You showed me the pictures of it. I actually like the rigging concept. Um, mm-hmm. I've designed ships in the past for like old, when I was in college, uh, school projects and stuff. Yeah. And I always liked the idea of rigging. Yeah. And what, but, and, but the thing is, it's like we are talking about like everything has to have a use. Right. Which become, so the rigging can only be, you know, a couple of things. One is structural integrity, of course. Right. It's what the D4 looks like it's for. Mm-hmm. But if you want classic looking rigging, you yeah. know, like what you would see on, on, a, on a schooner or something. And right? I mm-hmm. came up with a design that had these beautiful towers and rigging going out in every direction and stuff. And, and it looked like it could have been like on an old schooner. I came up with the concept that these were the shield generators. Mm-hmm. And so the shield was in between the individual, the ropes, if you will, that would make up the rigging. Yeah. So each triangle there was a shield area. So that that was my basic concept. Yeah. Yeah. I, what I like about the Enterprise Klingon ships is that they make the ones that we're more familiar with look even better by yeah. comparison. That's the, what they're kind of designed to do. It's like, okay, this is the more primitive, ugly, less sophisticated version of the ugly and less sophisticated ships of the Klingon right. you know, <laughs> fleet. So... Yeah, but anyway. So I want to gr- uh, greet uh, Luke. Made it. T Berg, uh, not Ryan Johnson. Isaiah. Well, I put an announcement on on my channel. <laughs> oh, that's why I have actual views. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so pressure's on uh, now, Wes. Uh, no, that, that's kind of insulting to the people who show up without your help. <laughs> So, oh, man, you know, I literally just hundred... told you that you put out a notification last. Yeah. Sorry, should I mention that? Oops. No, no, I did. I did hear your a Cinnabon earlier. But no, I figured since you're already going, one thing that kind of sucks about my current schedule is uh, so I work at two in the afternoon, and. Uh, since I work late, I can't go to Saturday night church anymore like I used to. So we have to go Sunday morning. But then I was doing the rational roundtable on Sunday mornings. And so that I got to try to squeeze it out in between church and work. And it just becomes this jumbled mess. So if other people like yourself and others want to host it, and then we can, I mean, we can float it around to different channels. I'm fine with that. And just when I get home, I'll say, hey, here's where we are today. So if you want to host it this week and Sci-Fi Nation wants to host it one week and Number One wants to host it and Ramley Canuck wants to host it, I'm fine with that. Yeah, you're not the only one. Everybody's willing to to host. (laughs) Yeah, you're not the only one. You're not the only one who hates your schedule. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I believe me. I, I, you know, the funny thing is, there's there's advantages and disadvantages to my current schedule. The main advantage is that nobody else is streaming at eleven o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, with, with certain exceptions. <laughs> well, okay. Well, so I mean, I you I used to until you started the stream at that time, anti. Well, 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 let me put it this way: nobody huge is streaming. At eleven o'clock. Oh, I see. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Even no, no, no. Yeah. Nothing. You don't matter, Cinnamon. Although, wait till you see. <laughs> no, it. I, actually, it's really funny because I did a, a, a vile mic. I don't. Uh, I don't know. Is he here? I haven't. Uh, yeah, I think he is in the chat. Um, vile Mike asked me to record a segment for his upcoming review of. Um, Balance of Terror, because everybody knows that's my favorite episode. So when he and Vile Child are going to do Balance of Terror, they're going to have me in as like a third host for that one. And so I was recording my stuff, and I was very, very gracious to him. And I made sure to tell him how very gracious I was to help out a small and insignificant channel like his. (laughs) So so I was kind of being like how the evil Wesley Crusher was on Big Bang Theory. I was kind of being the evil anti-trekker on Vile Mike's channel. (laughs) Well, I hope you were respectful to the vile child, at least. Oh, heck no. The real star. <laughs> I, 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 Well, I cut myself off from actually calling her a four-letter word, but you could tell that I wanted to call her a four-letter word. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Well, she wanted to call her a star? She, she's the vile child, you know. She's not the the good child. Yeah. Um, gotcha. 
So, by the way, Wild Mike, if you are in the chat still, I'm curious when is that one going to come out? I'm I'm I can't wait to see it because uh, I've only heard my part of it and then seen their stuff in writing. So, well, don't worry, I didn't great great to ruin the surprise. He says, but you know, I didn't spoil the 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 real fun. Um, but you know. I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, Vile. I didn't mean to step on your insignificant toes. <laughs> Dang. Wow. It's supposed to be a nice friend no, stream. Yeah, but, but seriously, you know, the, one of the problems with once you start to grow as a channel, and you guys will, you know, those of you that do uh, content create, uh, like Cinnabon and Rambling and Darren, although hopefully not Darren, because if he keeps doing stuff on my channel, that's, that's cool for me. Uh, number one, Wesley. <laughs> And those in the chat that do it is eventually assuming that that you you build up an audience, then you got to start thinking about, oh shoot, do I really want to broadcast now because this other person who is a massive draw to the same audience I am is one, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, like with uh, most of you guys, uh, like I know all of you guys, uh, you know, and, and Sci-Fi Nation and stuff. A lot of you guys already purposely work around my schedule because you know that's the best way uh, to keep the community going. It's like, hey, after Anti Trekker, hang out with me, or hey, after Bird of Prey, hang out with me, and then we'll stop when Anti Trekker comes on and stuff like that. You know, um, we're the in between shows. Yeah, and there's, you know, what I was the in between show for the longest time. I, I don't know if you remember Wes. I don't remember how long you've been a subscriber, but for the longest time, my show would just be the show that came on right after Lore Reloaded. Yeah, I, I think it was Lore who uh, did a shout out to you, and I right. was like, okay, I'll check, I'll check out this anti trekker guy. Why is he a poo? Right, and and, and the funny, and then it got to a point as I started to grow, as people started referring to Lore as the pre-show, you know, and that and, became a running gag for a while. And then you did a shout out to Bird, and the first time I saw Bird, I was like, what the hell is this? Oh, Bird. He, he was tired that day, so we talked in a monotone the entire stream. Yeah. Oh no, that's just birds always monotone. More than normal. Yeah. <laughs> but then he played a game, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I get why why people watch this show." <laughs> but anyways, uh, the whole thing I wanted to do today was to get to know each other, so we're not just names on a chat board. So I wanted to give, you know, some of us time to kind of shine you go hey this is who i am and by the way i, I saw luke was saying something about this. what do you put uh, before hitting 10k i'm insignificant actually i still consider myself relatively insignificant as far as youtubers are concerned um because i mean yeah i'm excited that we're, we're pushing fourteen thousand subs now that's that's great and and with the advent of adding uh people like darren and um uh, uh, rock solid and the rest of the guys to uh, the channel lineup is I think it's helping but the you know do and in the grand scheme of things you know you look at these channels that have 100 200 300 300 thousand subs I'm nothing yeah you're not at 103 million subscribers right. and and 4,000 videos right. Like Although I, I was very excited I don't know if you guys saw but on my stream um, yesterday um, uh, uh, Lore, um, Lorecraft, uh, came on, and I didn't even know he was a subscriber. Uh, oh, wow, he, yeah, he's got like 260,000 subs. Uh, he does incredible artwork. If you haven't seen his artwork, it's just off the chains, great stuff. And so, but apparently, he's been following the channel. And it's like, oh, wow, cool, you know. So, can, can I have some of your subs? That'd be nice. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, um, but but you know everybody, it, it, every it's funny because everybody's a big fish in one pond and a small fish in another, except for Darren. He's just you know, I'm just here on a submarine. I'm just here. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's pretty niche. I I, I don't mind. In fact, I I, I kind of like the idea of having most of my Star Trek material just on your channel as a, as a regular feature. And then I can keep my channel for all the weird shit. Right. And if, yeah, you want to talk about <laughs> conspiracy theories and flat earth stuff on your channel, yeah. then, uh, people that are into that will be able to focus on that. 
right and, and yeah. more mainstream I, stuff then you can share with the, with the world on a larger scale and not have to worry about mixing your audience right Darren, i have to say i love your videos that you made it's like the weirder the better you get <laughs> you get you get that creepy music going on in the background and you've got your deep you know like intelligent voice and it's just oh. it's, I, I'm t- that's where you should hone in on, man. Those are amazing videos. Yeah, there's, um, yeah, I, my own videos. I was thinking about and not having any music in them anymore, just because I, then I can save a little money on my uh, on my uh, expenses for you know I make sound and stuff. But I might just see if I can buy one or two of the tracks that I use regularly, and that way I don't have, to have a subscription. Yeah, yeah, you just need one or two, and just like they're kind of those. Well, the problem with Epidemic Sound, though, is that they will copyright strike you if you don't have an active subscription with them. Right, uh, but you can you can also buy the tracks forever. Right, but how much is that? Yeah, they are expensive. I have to look at that yet, but and try to figure out if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do the expense. You know, so I mean, yeah, they kind of got you. I mean, uh, you know, it, so I, I thought about just kind of giving it a rest with the, with the music on my own videos for a little while, or try to find some alternatives that I don't have that I can use that fit the bill but don't uh but don't cost anything so which and by the way darren just so you know as long as you're producing content on my channel you can continue you, you can continue to use epidemic sound stuff even mm-hmm. if you're not as oh i know i know that was part of the part of the, the plan here yeah <laughs> so but uh yeah we'll see i mean i haven't made a, a huge decision yet but um you know i think i think my own channel is probably going to have about one video a month and then the 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 other you know the, the Andy Trucker stuff is going to be a weekly feature, so um, that's how I'll probably do it. So it looks like Isaiah wants to subscribe to you because he likes the flat Earth and conspiracy <laughs> theory stuff. So. Oh yay! I like I like <laughs> I like hearing it. I want to get into someone else's mindset and understand where they're coming from. And so Darren, your videos are are uh, great for that. Well, thank you very much. I, uh, yeah, I'm into the. I'm into the. the cons- I'm, I'm only into the conspiracies that deal with the natural world, though, like like Sasquatch and stuff like yes, that. Yes, right? yeah, cryptids and uh, and uh, you, know, you know the shape of the Earth and and the space program is about as is uh, what do I want to say? Uh, it's about as far away from the natural world ideas I, I usually get. I'm not. A, I'm not a Sandy. I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not a. Uh, uh, let's just say historical event kind of guy, whether a historical event, uh, you know, happened or it didn't happen or if it happened and who is responsible kind of deal. I, I'm not into that kind of stuff at all. I mean, I don't mind that other people look into it, but I don't want to look into it. So, you know, you know, the, the bad guys in world war two, for example, whether they did some bad things to a bad, you know, a group of people or not, I'm not into that kind of, if you get my meaning, I don't want to get this yeah, you know, yeah. stream, stream in trouble or anything. That was a good way of putting it. The, yeah, the bad yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know, because I mean, that's that just you know makes a lot of people angry and and uh, in in a way that uh, is unnecessary. So I mean, I, I my focus is just the natural stuff, you know. Anyway, I'm still Red waiting. Oh, it looked like Jim was making a sudden maneuver and then his video cut. I was gonna, I was going to say if he got into an accident or something, we'd be among the first to know here. I should, I probably, I, I'm starting to think I should probably stop showing my address on these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll find you and put you on my map. Yeah. Well, I, I realized on the last time I did a stream when I was driving, I literally show, I showed how to showed everyone how to get to my house. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh. I um, wouldn't pay that close of attention. So. If if, <laughs> if, I, if I were to go on a road trip. All the way to the East Coast. I would want to stop by each one of your guys's like towns and at least have like lunch with you or something. Well, I've always told people if they're ever through Middle Tennessee, let me know when they're going to be in, and we can meet at a Waffle House or something. Yeah. No, uh, no, Matt. I'm going to come to your front door, knock, and go, "Hi, I brought you a gift." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can say, "Mow my lawn, Wesley." <laughs> Somewhere else. You know, I had uh, my day job is with a certain cell. Somewhere cell-com- else. Oops, sorry. Thinking about taking it on. Week long road trip. My uh, day job is with a certain uh, cell carrier, and uh, a couple of months ago, I got a call from somebody. Oh, no, that's right. Right yeah, it's okay. I, I got a call from somebody who was trying to stream a road trip onto YouTube, and of course, they went through Utah. And this particular carrier that I work for has almost no presence in Utah, and she was all upset. And it's like, well, you know, 
our coverage map is you know readily available online and you could you know i mean she just she, they just assumed that they'd have full coverage you know across the united states from new york to to, to oregon and uh yeah no well that's why you know that's why it's always fun the cellular, cellular carriers are not pointing the finger at any one of them but they always like put these maps that show like 99.9 percent .9 of the united states covered mm -hmm. and then a small print at the bottom of the screen says not actual coverage Right, because you're because you're roaming a lot of times, and and all the carriers now have like a handshake agreement where they'll let you roam as far as their voice network, you know, uh, you know, and and it wasn't like that, you know, ten fifteen years ago, but now it is. But then people just assume, oh, I'm going to have full service with data and everything uh, all over the country, and no, 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 you don't. It is getting better and better, though. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm a little concerned. I'm a little concerned about the health risks to the 5G upgrade, but absolutely, yeah. Is that going to be your next conspiracy video series? No, I'm going to let other people deal with that. It doesn't really deal with the natural world, but I am concerned. I'll be I'll be looking into it. I mean, you know. Well, I, I would just say that that could run into a conflict of interest with work. So that's why. I was, that's true. I'd it be is careful about that. Well, it is it is hoped that I won't be working for you know a, a, a telecommunications company you know in the next year or two. So we'll see. That'd be something to put on the back burner then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I mean I mean I I sometimes have reservations about it because I think that a lot of these uh, younger folks are just totally addicted to their cell phones. I mean I talk to twenty somethings who hate going to the movie theater to watch movies because they have to put their phone away or they're supposed to, you know, and. Yeah. You know, and they can't. I mean, I mean, that's. I mean, you don't like to watch a movie in the movie theater. That's how you're supposed to watch a movie, you know. And no, they don't want to do that. And uh, you know, it, when when those hurricanes hit um, Florida and Texas a couple of years ago, we got calls, and it was almost like I was dealing with 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 drug addicts, desperately wanting to know when their data was going to be restored. They had they had voice through through roaming. You know, all the carriers got together and said, okay, we're going to open up all the all the lines and all our towers for for, for uh, emergency calling and obviously, you know, voice and stuff. But when it came to data, you know, it was still down. And, you know, I had one young lady in the Miami uh, hurricane shelter, you know, it's in, in, the, in the middle of the city. It was like a stadium or something that they converted. And you got to keep in mind, there are cranes collapsing in the city, but she's demanding that we send technicians out in the, into the hurricane to repair the <laughs> towers so that she can get her data back. And, you know, it was just crazy. You know, and, uh, you know, I, you know, you had, you know, you have grumpy old men who I envision having alligators on their shirts, you know, um, <laughs> saying, you know, saying that, you know, a uh, hurricane is no reason why I can't have service. Well, you know, these, yeah. these people have got to get on the Twitter so that they can insult people. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or check their portfolio from their phone, like big shots or something. Who, who knows? No, nah, they're just That's checking Twitter. That's when you just go, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. We're we're working on it. It 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 it'll be up as soon as possible. One center. Give us about a year. <laughs> got shut down. It was it was a, a center that was going to be shut down. But one of the things they did was because you, there's obviously a hold time when you you know when you're calling in during a hurricane. They replaced the normal hold music with "Rock You Like a Hurricane" by the Scorpion. <laughs> and and. Um, and you know, somebody comes in like that was really insensitive, and you know, and so they, they, they that guy got fired, and you know, they shut down the center. <laughs> so it's kind of a funny story. I wonder if they did that intentionally, or oh yeah, yeah, it was intentional because people were just getting sick of 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 the, you know people calling in, you know, wanting to know when it was weird too because the people in Florida were were the ones who were really. Um, I don't want to put down Floridians, but the, the ones from Florida were the ones that were like drug addicts calling in, want to know when they get their fix. Whereas the Texans, because you got to remember, Texas was also affected as well. They called in just saying, okay, yeah, when, when, when will it be up? And well, we got technicians out. We don't know, you know, when it'll be. Okay, well, we're up in our attic, you know, our first two levels of our house are flooded, and but we'll be okay. Like, okay, well, you know, God bless you. And, you know, they were, they were like tough, rugged people that were helping each other with boats and things. Floridians, you know, not so much. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of um, when one of the ships I was on, we went to um, Gulfport, Port Mississippi after Hurricane Katrina. Uh -huh. And um, all the casinos there were all smashed up mm. and everything and on because the, they're on barges originally. Right. 
But yeah, they were all ashore. Cars were stacked, you know, one on top of the other. Hmm. And then we went into people's houses, and you could see the water line was way up high. Yeah. You know. Yeah. As, and, uh, yeah, just the smell of walking into a place that had been flooded was pretty bad in itself, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's all that rotten wood and stuff, plaster. Yep. On to more happy <laughs> notes, the happy <laughs> subjects. Uh, <laughs> so, um, how's your back feeling today, uh, people who are, who are hurting right now? Oh yeah, that's a happy subject. Well, no, it's not a happy. It's the best I could come up with here. After <laughs> hurricanes, back aches. Okay, we're gonna we're we're climbing the we're climbing the ladder. <laughs> well, what we could talk about is number one sci-fi. You were telling me that you were in the navy, and you, t- you said a little bit about it, but then everyone jumped in and topics jumped around. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, you're hosting the show. There's supposed to be a topic, right? Uh, well. The original idea was to get people who don't really have a, you know, speak much, you know, on live stream to come in. But then it got you, you and Darren. Oh, Wagner. I see. It. Oh, okay. So now the, the topic is anti check and, and Darren are bad. No, you guys are not bad. You guys are just great talkers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's no winning here, huh? I think he just trip. mean. I think he just means you. I'm yeah, I gonna, think so. I'm just gonna mute anti check and Rushka. Uh, Number one, sci-fi. You're telling us a little bit about yourself and how you're in the Navy. Do you want to share yes. anything more, or? Well, I mean, what else do you want to know? How many people I mean, have you killed? How many people have I killed? <laughs> With your bare Inten- hands. Intentionally or <laughs> unintentionally? <laughs> wow. You mean you have a lever for both? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Not, nobody that I know of, but you know. How many know. people did you leave in the ocean? Come on, let us know. Well, we picked up a floater in the ocean <laughs> when we were off, we're off the coast of uh, Af- uh, pa- Pakistan or whatever, and we had to empty out a freezer to to put them into on the ship. And you stick, um, you stick the guy in a freezer. Yeah, yeah, you stick him. Well. Obviously, we you have a, a body bag. You fill that bag with ice. Oh, that's um, I'm guessing he was dead. Yeah, he was dead since he was just floating there. He was, uh, you know, I guess a Mid-Eastern person. Um, and so when we pulled back into Bahrain, we uh, then basically dropped him off there. You know, but he was on board our ship for, I don't know, at least a couple weeks or so. And then, um, like I've said before, we were only operating on one good engine the whole underway period. Um, and the ideal is to at least have two, but the other one kept breaking down. And so we were pulling in and out of Bahrain like a, so much it was uh, ridiculous, you know? Yeah, I think Bird of Prey might have a job for you. Yeah, well, I, I told him, hey, if I if I lived anywhere near New York, I, I'd be over to his place probably every day helping helping him out. But unfortunately, I'm dispose of the bodies. Yeah, what a well, you know whatever it takes, you know. <laughs> but um, but unfortunately, up all the I, I live, basement. Yeah, unfortunately, I live in Florida, so pretty far away from New York. So I guess uh, since Wesley highlighted it, Luke wants to know what we thought of the last episodes of Picard. So Wesley, what did you think? I haven't seen it. I, Captain I Trek, what did you think? <laughs> and you there, Captain Trek? He muted himself. Yeah, you're muted if you don't realize it. I can unmute him. Well, um, you... No, I can't unmute it if he mutes himself. Yeah. All right, number one, what did you think? Um, I mean, I thought it was okay. Uh, it was, yeah, probably maybe the best, the second best episode yet. Just I like, I do like the ones that really focus on Picard and his um, ordeal with yeah. the board. That really gets into the psyche of, hey, it's never, I mean, gonna leave your, you, you know, your experiences. Because yeah, I still remember things from the military, obviously. 
and that that type of thing will never leave your memory, no matter how hard you try to um, push any bad times out. They're always going to be there, you know. How about you, Dan? I thought it was meh. Uh, the only thing I liked about it was the encounter between Picard and Hugh. I thought that was genuine and felt felt like the kind of follow up to uh, Descent Part Two that it should have been. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I, I there was one shot of the whatever it's called, the Lacerna or whatever it's called, the Kosovo, whatever whatever Space it is. Space crab. Yeah, the yeah. There was one shot where it almost looked like it could have been cool, but it really wasn't. You know, I just don't like. I, I just don't like, like that shot. Ugly show. ships. Well, I like. Okay, <laughs> I, I like ugly Federation starships. I don't. I, the civilian craft. There's been very few civilian craft that I like. In fact, the only civilian ship in in Star Trek that I really love let me, is. Let me guess. Star Trek Three. No, oh. no, no. It was Degra's ship from uh, the third season of uh, of uh, uh, Enterprise. He was the. He had this weird submarine looking uh, thing that could go underwater. See, I like the civilian ship from Star Trek Three. Let's see, that was that freighter right in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not bad. They've used that freighter to you know for that freighter model before in other in other shows. It's it, and that's yeah, not bad. Yeah, so it was its first appearance was Star Trek. Yeah, III. yeah, yeah, and that's not bad. You know, you're right. I, I don't mind that all because it, it looks dirty and industrial. It almost looks like a Klingon ship. But it but, looks, but, you, but it's clearly Federation from the bridge module and stuff like that. You can recognize it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, it, I've noticed that sometimes they use the model and they reverse the direction it travels. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they do it. They, it goes frontwards and backwards depending on what race it's supposed to be for. So, yeah, but when it's when it's it's it, when it's presented the way we saw it in in three, it definitely looks like it's a human sort of ship. Yeah, that's not bad. How about you, Cinnabon? What did you think of the latest episode of Picard? Uh, I was, yeah, I'm with Darren. It's basically meh. Uh, I give it a five. I'm just so I'm still completely indifferent on the show, mainly because it's it's fun to watch, but when I think about it, it's probably not something I'm ever going to go back and rewatch again. So yeah, I'm completely indifferent on the show right now. I think the rewatchability of the show is going to really depend on how the season ends. Yeah, um, and that's the problem with serialized shows like this is because if they don't stick the landing with the ending, you're not going to want to rewatch the season. Oh, exactly. You know, but but if the if the ending is freaking awesome, then sure, maybe every year or so you might binge it again just to remember what an awesome buildup it was. Right, right. You know, yeah. but I'm surprised at you, Jim, because I figured that since uh, you know Elnor had his most badass moment ever, being the closing shot of the entire episode, that you would have given this one like a ten out of ten. <laughs> well that that yeah that closing close. line was good yeah that was my favorite moment there please choose to live it's like <laughs> yeah. oh yeah and then they don't show us what happened hopefully they'll do a flashback or something yeah. maybe later but does he yeah. basically say don't fight me because you'll die yes. yeah yeah That's exactly what he's saying yeah. choose to live man. Life, my friend so so bird had a question for darren how do you uh how do flat earthers explain the coriolis effect the coriolis effect the coriolis of oh, yeah that thing that uh, thing. It, it doesn't exist for those of us that are not experts what is the coriolis effect there well it, it takes two forms uh the the first evidence of the coriolis effect is the idea that water travels down a drain differently depending on what side of the of you know the hemisphere you're in and that, that you know it that they can travel it, it, water can spin down a drain in any direction, no matter where you are, that's 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 been demonstrated and uh, that's been tested. The other idea is that a sniper, a long distance sniper, has to account for the curvature, you know, the the rotation of the Earth when they they plan their their shot. And while the Coriolis effect is mentioned in the sniper manual uh, that, for example, SEALs use, um, I've talked to a bunch of them. They say we don't use it. It's it's in the manual, but we just don't we don't read that chapter. Well, there you go. But now, and I never understood now because not I was not a sniper, so I, mm-hmm. I didn't have to deal with that. Right. Um, but I, I just figured that well, what would the range have to? I mean, and and I understand you know you 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 don't think the Earth is curved in the first place, but 
with the size of the Earth, what would the range have to be for the Coriolis effect to be significant enough to have to account for it in your aim? Well, yeah, you got to also remember that your target is very small. Usually, it's a human being. And right. You want to you want to get a kill shot. So you know, it, it, you know, the idea being that if you're you're off, you would you would you'd miss the head and hit the shoulder or something like that, or miss the heart and hit something else. But uh, the range would, um, where you know, the idea is that yeah, you know, you would have to be shooting somebody that's at least like half a mile away. You know, I don't know the exact measurement, but Again, you know, I talked to a couple of uh, SEAL teams that rode my boat, and we did we did have conversations in the torpedo room. That the torpedo room is where everybody hangs out uh, on my on my boat. That's the only space big enough, other than the cruise mess, to have like you know group conversations. That seems a little um, creepy to be hanging around large explosive devices like that. Well, I mean, you're you know, it's it's where else are you going to do it? You know, I mean, you know, during long underways, we had berthing in the torpedo room. We actually don't use, well, we didn't use the, 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 the two bottom torpedo tubes. And so all the weapons that were lined were moved and lined up with the fo with the top ones, the dorsal ones, so that you could have racks and bunks and things underneath where the torpedoes would normally be. Um, and that's just where, yeah, where we would do our thing. But yeah, they, they, they said, look, you know, we have to account for wind. And you know things like that, but no, the 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 the, uh, the rotation of the Earth is not is not a factor. And of course, then the question you know comes up: Well, why is it in your manual then? And they kind of smile and they say, "Well, you know, if we ever lost that manual or that manual ever became compromised, we kind of want some people to think that we're supernatural. <laughs> you know, that they're dealing with Jedi Knights, you know, or something. You know, and then, so that's that's in there, but you know." From everyone I've talked to, one of my friends in the military, they've always said, told me wind factors is more, you know, important than, than the cold. Yeah, I mean, why would, I, I don't understand why it would be in the sniper manual because it would have the same inertial frame at, as the as the shooter. So, I mean, you would right. still be, the bullet would still be retaining the actual, the actual movement of the earth. So I don't think the Coriolis effect would have any any effect on a bullet. Yeah, unless yeah I mean, shooting at miles. Right. And, you know, I mean, unless you're the Punisher who can, you know, fire a weapon in, in Texas and hit somebody in Mexico, you know, um, yeah, I don't, I don't see the, I don't see it, it being a thing either. But, you know, yeah, wind is the biggest, is the biggest factor. I mean, just like in World War II, when they fired a straight running Mark 14 torpedo, they had to account for current, you know, which was, you know, right. Those things were basically slow moving bullets, the Mark 14s. So yeah, you know. I never you know, the, the the idea of having to compensate for the curvature of the Earth. I think I I never got that because I mean at least maybe because I did I never used an actual sniper rifle. I was you know I was always using like standard M sixteen M sixties types weapons, and at the range that you can fire. The, it's not like you're calculating an orbital trajectory. You're basically, right. you know, it, it's just like you don't have to put little wings on the bullets to, to, you know, in order to keep it airborne. It's just so much forward momentum that it's not going to matter. Right. Yeah. It's... So, yeah. It, it never made a lot of sense to me because at least my understanding of of the basics of weapons fire is it's not like you're you're you know and i know they like to do it in the movies and stuff but in the real world you're not shooting people from miles away usually no i mean you're you, you're she there's long distance shooting i mean there is there is that but as far as miles away i mean you'd have to no, i mean for that for that you would use something using else a yeah you'd use some kind of you know missile type weapon instead of yeah. a, a firearm yeah. but Anywho, did we lose somebody? Uh, I think we lost Captain Trek. Oh, yeah, Captain Trek said invite somebody else. Okay. <laughs> well, if anyone else does want to hop in, or do I? Preferably not someone that wants to argue with Darren about the Coriolis effect. <laughs> well, look, as long the link, Wes? yeah, I'll I'll drop the link again. So well, as long as time. it's a civil discussion, we don't start calling each other names and being rude to each other. Oh, and then we lost Cinnabon. <laughs> wow, you're just... Uh, 
This is what you get for starting to call people racist and stuff. Oh, man. <laughs> and we gained X Split Broadcaster. Oh, okay. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, it's cinema. You have to you switch to your computer. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't want to be on my phone anymore. <laughs> uh, and Rambling Canuck is back. And uh, so Piano Dean says the question is, is it murder? Uh, are we going back to the murder discussion? What's what's murder? What, what is, is Elnor a murder bot? <laughs> well, you know, people were t trying to argue with me that Seven of Nine did not murder that chick at the end of episode five of Picard. Well, she definitely did. Yeah, I'm ho I'm hoping she teleported away. Because I thought she was kind if of a she neat villain. She teleported in a cloud of blood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, exactly. I, you know, special effects, right? I, I haven't seen the scene, but I've, it's been described over and over, and I'm agreeing with you on the take tracker. But like, wh where is the line of killing for protection or law or something like that there, in murder? There, there, the the pro one of the problems is is that murder is not the most precisely defined term that there is. The biblical definition of murder is to kill another human being with malice, right? So meaning that, uh, for example, a police officer shooting someone in the line of duty is not murder. Executing someone uh, by the state is not murder, right? But murder is killing a person because you're pissed off at them or killing someone because you want to take their stuff. That's murder. Yeah. And she in the case went of down seven, there with the purpose to kill her, huh? And she clearly went down there with the purpose to kill her. So right, she it was premeditated and it was motivated by anger and hatred. And the thing is, is that what people are saying is, well, she was justified because of what happened to Ichib at the beginning of the episode. But that just justifies her anger. It doesn't justify killing someone. At and, least not in my mind. I don't think that there is such a thing as justifiable murder. Now, there is also, by the way, it's not considered murder to kill someone in self-defense or in defense of others because you're not doing it out of malice. We yeah. also don't, you sorry, go ahead. We don't. We also don't know enough about these rangers that she now works for and what their actual authority is. You know, if she was, if she, if she's like Judge Dredd and has the ability to do a summary execution, that's one thing. But, but, but uh, the way that Picard talked about her was that they're vigilantes. Yeah. Well, Picard's been wrong about a lot of things. That's true, which is something I like about the show, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I agree. You know, well, we we should have had more context of who these Rangers are. How do they operate? You know, how, how are they legal to, you know, what system are they under? We just, yeah. Are they One just of, a group of vigilantes that say they're the, the law? Or mm -hmm. are they actually, like, authorized by some kind of government? Right. I, don't, I don't think there's actually a government there anymore, so I'm pretty sure it's just them being vigilantes out there. Right. Well, it's possible. But, uh, you know, one of my favorite examples of, of an example of murder uh, versus just the usual kind of violence that, for example, Klingons will, will engage in is in the Deep Space Nine episode, The House of Quark. If anybody remembers that one, Quark yes. was kidnapped by Agrilka and forced to marry her, and it, you know her house became the House of Quark, and a rival uh, to that house... Um, uh, you know, basically challenged, uh, you know, uh, uh, Quark to a duel in front of Galron and, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, Quark threw his, threw his battle left down and basically got on his knees and said, well, you're not going to get a battle. You're going to get an execution. And, you know, Degore, the, the, the bad guy was about to do it. And, and Galron stopped him and said, you know, you, you know, you can't murder this pathetic little man. Right. If you can do that, you have no honor, and that's when he got discommon. You know, they did the whole you know about face thing to him, and and basically turned him into a pariah. And that was an example where you know, in in honorable combat, you know, Degora could have murdered the you know could have killed rather uh, Quark, but if but under those other circumstances, it was murder, and and it was clearly defined. Right. And uh, and I liked that 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 demonstration of 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 the concept of murder versus just you know dying in combat kind of thing. And that's something that, that, and Trek, up until recently, Trek has been very consistent about, is that it's perfectly okay to kill someone in combat. It is not okay to kill someone in cold blood. Mm -hmm. And that's where I drew the line with Seven, because Seven, you know, basically just walked in and straight up murdered her. She, she didn't walk in and, and, like, they got into a fight and in the heat of battle killed her. Right. 
And I can't imagine, you know, Janeway being very impressed if she was there or saw this event or whatever. I think she would feel that she failed in the arc that she was trying to establish for seven, where she became a, you know, a, you know, and then again, there's another argument that says, you know, what she did was very human, you know? Right. But, yeah. but being human doesn't make it right. Right. Exactly. But she wasn't about being right. She was about trying to regain her humanity and individuality. And if that's all she was interested in, yeah, she probably got that in some way here, but yeah, I still think like her, her old crewmates would have been disappointed with her actions. Right. And, and no. I got, Oh, good. Well, I was just going to say, the other thing that bothered me about that scene was they clearly said each of was still in the Starfleet. So why didn't Starfleet go after this lady either? Or why didn't they arrest her at that point and bring her back to Starfleet? Right. Well, why didn't Starfleet investigate the Romulans at killing somebody on the roof of their headquarters? Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of writing problems with this show as well, which is, you know. Well, well, the, the, well the Romulans killing someone on the roof of, the, of headquarters was somehow covered up and erased. So, yeah. But still, yeah, you'd, you'd, stick, you'd still think they'd want to know what exploded on that roof, though. <laughs> yeah. And, and oh, it, was Picard. Just, it was Picard had a little too much uh, beans and bourbon. Yeah. There. <laughs> I mean, so with the seventh scene, it sounds like it easily could have been changed of her just saying, you're under arrest. You need to come with me for, you know, for your crimes. And then Jay said, you're resisting. You know, a simple resist. Would have right. changed the whole scene. Right. Or they could have actually had our guards come in and start shooting and then, you know, yeah. have her taken out. <laughs> but that's the thing. And, and and I know Resolute was trying to say that, the you know, it's morally justified, not necessarily legally justified. And here's, and I, I've said this before, but I, I maintain, moral actions do not need justification. Right. And so if, for example, there is a, uh, a helpless person about to be killed by a brute and you run in and physically stop the brute and the brute is killed in that action, no, you don't have to justify anything. It's pretty obvious you did the correct thing. If, however, you walk into a room and shoot someone in the head with, and, and they didn't make a move against you, now you have some justifying to do. Right. And so you don't need to justify a, a morally sound action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Piano Dean, I do think it's murder because, like I said, she went down with the intention to kill her. So revenge or not, I mean, it's still murder. Yeah, and she was duplicitous because she kind of made Picard think that she was not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, she I'm had other sure. choices, too, that she could have made. So definitely. By the way, how stupid was Picard at the end of that episode? Very well, you know, well. I'm certainly glad you didn't kill that woman. Oh, you'd like a couple of phaser rifles? Sure, yeah, exactly. he's down? sure. Let me hit the button for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he's being portrayed as blissfully innocent, right? Mm -hmm. So it. Fits, I think arrogant is it fits. A word. Well, yeah, but still, you know, it, it it's something that fascinates me how they are portraying him here because here's a guy who was used to having subordinates who brought him information so that he could make informed decisions and things. And now he's out of that command structure. He's not the leader of anything. He's not a commander of ship. And, and we see how kind of not bumbling's not the word, but how, how ineffective he is at leading when he's not within a, a command structure without when he's outside of a, a military type organization, you know, we, we start to find out that, you know, Starfleet is not a military organization. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, and there, uh, go ahead. Luke made a comment, and I had to just disagree with him. He says, there's still the uh, lies the question, if Seven did not kill her, what would have happened to the ex-Borg? It's not like uh, she could arrest, arrest her of all those guards. She could have tried. She well, the first said, the first time there weren't the guards there, so she could have they could have taken her with her. Right. Why didn't they just beam her up to the Rasanati or whatever and, uh, and put her in a holding cell and take her back to Starfleet or drop her off the Romulan, uh, you know, the local Romulan authorities? So, yeah, there's no, they absolutely could have arrested her. And even when she beamed back down, she could have just immediately beamed her out. Right. Yeah. There was no yeah, there was no need for a cold hearted killing. Yeah, if her if her her, her uh, intention was though to prevent this kind of thing from ever happening again, and that was her sole focused intention, and that she was able to purge you know her emotions of being you know of, of, of regret over losing Egypt, then I can kind of see where you could finagle something, 
there about the righteousness of her act, but I, but given that that's not what they telegraphed in the episode, yeah, I, I agree that it's it, yeah, it's and, yeah. In fact, what's the last thing Seven said? He was a son to me. Bam, yeah, you're dead. Yeah. She didn't yeah. say now the Borg will be safe. You know <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know it's it's like it reminds me of the the age old argument of, about the Marvel Comics character, the Punisher. You know, you've got some writers who have been assigned the Punisher who hate the character and hate the whole concept and make him a sociopathic <laughs> murderer, and others that just make him a you know a freelance executioner, basically. You know, um, you know, and and it, you can all you can always tell whether the writer is 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 okay with this character concept or not and and uh, in this case I, I i don't know what to think of these writers right. at this point when it comes to seven i think that the problem is and and, the, and seven is not the problem seven is just to me symptomatic and in fact bird nailed it in his video where he shows the body count of this show the the writers of this show are nihilists they put no value on human life yeah and so, and, you know, I'm sorry, that doesn't, you know, just because you can kill somebody on screen doesn't make it better. And it doesn't make the characters more morally complex, as Vile's trying to suggest. You know, moral, compl moral complexity is episodes like Tuvix. Right? Right. That's, that's moral complexity right mm -hmm. there. Right. You know, having someone become a murderer is not moral complexity. No. And I think Star Trek has lost its innocence with this. CBS material, right? Um, you know, you, you know, there were people that tried to say that when Deep Space Nine came out, and I'm like, yeah, but the Federation didn't. I mean, yes, when the Federation was at war, that was, even even while they're at war, they were still sending out peace feelers. They were, they weren't, you know, they were being, you know, they were being Starfleet. They were being the Federation, even when they were at war uh, until the very end, when they started sanctioning things like, you know, the the in the in a dark moon or in a pale moonlight, you know, plot. Mm -hmm. But I mean. Uh, the, the idea was always that, okay, after this war is over, we're going to snap back to what we were before. And uh, with this new, these new shows, it, you're, you're right. I mean, it just feels like that, 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 that the Federation, that, that Star Trek in general has lost its innocence. Yeah. And it's, and, and again, and you know, it's not even the idea that, oh, the Federation, because I know some people, and I've gotten into massive arguments with people online about this is, you know, people are saying, oh, how they've ruined Starfleet because of the corruption in Starfleet. And I've tried to say, no, that's nothing new. You know, that's there's no individual aspect of Picard or even Discovery that you could argue has never appeared in Star Trek before. The oh, only real, the only really new thing is the F bomb or nudity. You know, and the right. F bomb is just an extension of data saying oh chit and uh you know kirk saying hell back in the original series you know mm -hmm. right so, and, so real quick i want to say uh sorry to admiral saval he's in the background and I, mm -hmm. i'm not able to bring him up uh but thanks thanks for coming we got we got a good chat going i just wanna, <laughs> I, I just feel bad go backstage if you want me to for a little bit i don't mind uh well that's that's, that's up to you you and him you know yeah I'm, I'm cool with that if he wants to come on for a bit but so anti, so anti trigger. Yes. I, I know it's 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 a cartoon, it's an anime, but I think you should watch Trigun and get to the second <laughs> half. Get to the second <laughs> half because look, the first half is is kind of building the world and it's funny and it and all that. The second half is where the <clears throat> drama kicks in and it deals with this issue. It the whole show is about right. when is it morally right to kill or, or not to. But this but this is the problem and and, and I and I get you know, I, I am going to eventually get to watching the whole thing at Trigun. Don't get me. I'm, I will, Wesley. I promise. <laughs> but the what, what, what I'm talking about is specific to Trek. It's for, perfectly fine to have moral ambiguity in storylines, right? You know, like, I love The Expanse. And The Expanse has got a lot of moral grays, right? I mean, heck, one of the main characters, Amos, is a straight-up sociopath. And, and will kill at the drop of a hat and not even blink about it. And he's one of the heroes. Hello, of the guys. Hey, Admiral. You know, so, and, and there have been, you know, in fact, one of the most creepy moments in the entire series for, uh, from season four is he walked into a room where the bad guy is locked and the bad guy punches him in the face. And so he's like, oh, <laughs> thank you. So now he can go to town on this guy and be, quote, unquote, justified. Hey, <laughs> my thing is um goes to the murder part 
Mm -hmm. You can talk it up to the senility of the actor and the senility of the character itself himself. I think it's more bad writing than anything. I think it's, well, I don't even know if I would call it bad writing, just a change in the attitude. That's why I say I think the writers are nihilists, and I think that that's showing through the material. And Star Trek was never, I mean, Star Trek has gone to dark places, but Star Trek has never been nihilistic. Like, even in, like, the Pale Moonlight, probably with the single darkest episode of Generation 2 Trek, nowhere did it suggest that killing the Romulan was a good thing. Right, and nowhere did they suggest that that life didn't have value. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure that Star Trek writing rooms have had nihilists before. They just didn't <clears throat> keep yeah. into their work. Right. You know, that's that's the that's and, and by by bad writing when that's that that can be considered a, a form of bad writing, a self indulgence. Look at it this way: Berman, Brega, and um, what's the main showrunner for TNG? They hated the guy. A lot of the things he wanted to do, or they, the other writers wanted to do, were nixed by him after Roddenberry died. By who? Um, I see you're talking about like Ronald Moore or something. Who was the head executive for um, TNG? Berman was. Yeah. He, yeah, Berman, if you've watched any um let's see, what is it? Can I'm just waking up, sorry. That's all right. Right. Uh, no so, problem. While Max been making a lot of comments, one of them was uh she is imposing her will on the galaxy. That seems perfectly in character for seven. I uh, disagree because seven here's the thing. That was it would be in character for the Borg, but Seven, after she became, you know, like once Seven started saying things like Voyager is my collective now, she was more of a pragmatist than most of the crew, but she didn't like suddenly think, oh, we just need to impose ourselves on the world. You know, she she basically like in uh, the one episode that people brought up where she let the Herodron kill the uh, species 8472, she was doing it for pragmatic purposes. She wasn't doing it because life has no value. She was doing it because she weighed the value of the, uh, you know, uh, 100 plus lives on Voyager compared to one alien that wants to kill us. Yeah. And there's, there's a difference. That's a moral dilemma. Uh, but just walking into a room and straight up shooting someone because you're pissed at them, that's not the same thing. Yeah. And, and so, and Trek, I think you were trying to get to a point earlier is like Trek used to. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, moral ambiguity, oh, what I was yeah. saying, moral ambiguity and fact, oh, fine, but not. Sorry. In, hold on just a second, Admiral. But, but in Trek, Trek has, you know, one thing that people have tr kind of confused is they've always said, oh, Trek is an optimistic view of the future. You no, know, well, Trek is an optimistic view of humanity. It, Trek is an optimistic view of what we can be. And in Discovery and Picard, that's what's lost is that we're no longer optimistic about people. We might be optimistic that the future will have great technology and stuff like that, but people are basically just, you know, worthless. And that's, and that's counter to what Trek has always been before. Back to my point, when yeah. Berman took over from Roddenberry, there were a lot of shows in pre-production episodes that were in pre-production that dealt with the gay community and the um, lesbian community too. But every time those came up, they were nixed by Berman because he hates gays. And he actually said that in an interview. I hate the gay community. I hate the lesbian community. <laughs> I would have to see that interview to believe. Yeah, I've, I've never even heard of that. I'm sorry. Yeah, that doesn't I, seem like that'd be something. I, a Hollywood like producer actually, you know, I, and I know that there's been the recent video of people trying to say Burnham was like this right wing nut job, which is kind of laughable if you look at his body of work. But 
uh, you know, if he actually said that, fine, but I'd have to see, I'd have to see it to believe that because it was in the special um, disc of season one for TNG. I, I, if you had the DVD collection, does anyone have that? Okay. I do. Yeah, I don't have season one, but I only have season two because of Darren. <laughs> is is there a way to pull that clip? Well, I'm sure all the extras are on YouTube somewhere. But... Yeah. Um, hold on. We're what not mean? trying to pick on you. It's just uh, a claim needs evidence. And that's, 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 really a, and that's, and that's a very nice even say that on a DVD extra too. I mean, that would just be shooting himself in the foot. Yeah, right. that's a very that's a very serious claim as well, and you know it needs to be backed up a little bit. I think. And maybe he said something slightly different that can be interpreted in a wrong way. But and and here's the thing, like. I understand that, you know, but regardless of what Burnham may feel about <laughs> what, what you may think about the LGBTQ whatever community, uh, I don't think anybody ever felt that Star Trek was anti LGBT. No, no, not at all. And so, and, and that includes under Burnham's uh, leadership. Why do you keep saying Burman? I mean, Burnham. It's Berman. I said Burnham. It was just a slip of the tongue, but Berman. <laughs> um, but, and the thing is, is that, I mean, that even so, I mean, like the main point of what we were talking about with the murder thing is, is Trek nihilist? And, and keep in mind, like Trek before never felt that way to me. The closest thing you got to any kind of nihilism was really maybe some of the first season of TNG, um, and, but that's really just because you know Roddenberry tried to push the whole atheistic thing on there, and it didn't work very well. Um, I mean, if anything, I'd say Trek is anti-nihilism for for the most part. Right. Well, well, Bert, you know, Roddenberry tried to get you know he liked the idea that well you could push God out of the equation and man would be morally superior. Uh, that's kind of where he was heading with it. The problem is, is that you know that what you see in modern Trek is well, no, you push God out of the equation and life becomes meaningless. And that's kind of what that's the whole core of what nihilism is about. Is nihilism is about the idea that if you know if you push the divine out of the equation completely, what you end up with is cold indifference. There is no purpose to anything, and therefore a human life has no... Well, more. that sucks. Looks yeah, like CBS took it down. CBS took down Burnham saying, or <laughs> Berman saying that? Yep. Okay. That well, if they published a disc, why would they take it down? Well, because maybe Berman was about to sue them for... Well, if he actually said it, he'd have nothing to sue him over. Yeah. You can't sue someone for defamation if they're using your words. Yeah. <laughs> but but the idea is that if you but if you push, uh, if you if you push the divine out of it, I'm not I'm not necessarily saying Christianity or any particular religion, but you just push the idea of any kind of absolute moral authority out of the equation completely. What value does a human life have over a rock or anything else? I'm agreeing with you, so I've got like no comment on you. <laughs> yeah, I got, yeah, I got no comment either. I mean, I think it is interesting how the only human religions that survived into the 24th century were the Native American ones. Yeah, you know it. Uh, Basically, you're either an atheist or a pagan. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it, it, you know, it, 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 and there's so many different things you could do. I mean, obviously, you have the Bajoran religion. Obviously, that's not a human religion, but you didn't, you know, a human being was involved eventually in that. But uh, you know, if you just go back even a hundred, you know, a hundred years earlier, God was at least acknowledged, you know, on on the original series. 
Yeah, and, and I actually like, I think they, they don't, granted, I know that the original series also took it the other way a little bit, but like with episodes like Bread and Circuses, but the, uh, but overall, I like the idea that, you know, basically Kirk would just say, in, you know, like in Bounce of Terror, in accordance with our traditions and many beliefs. Yeah. Or, you know, when he met Adonis, or not Adonis, uh, Apollo, and said, you know, you know, we prefer the one. Yeah. You know, that, that was a very interesting and long forgotten line in that episode. A lot of people don't don't remember that. But it was there. The M5 TOS computer even even pro God. <laughs> what's that? TOS was definitely pro God. T and G was anti God for the first season and a half or so and then kind of neutral for the rest of the run. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the Klingons had their religions. I mean, the, the episode where the KLS was cloned, I thought was one of the most fascinating ones because they were able to, you know, sort of deal with the idea of and you know, touch upon the idea of a second coming, so to speak, without without using you know the human, you know, the, the, like for example, Christianity or something, having it be KLS the unforgettable. And yeah, what uh, if you could clone Jesus? Exactly. You know, how would people react? One of the episodes I liked that they dealt with religion was uh, Voyager with Bellana and her going to uh, the clean on afterlife. Stovacore? Yes, Stovacore. And, and she was like having a hard time, you know, uh, accepting that it's real. She's like, no, no, it's you know, it's just it's just myths, it's just legends. It's well, not the real. interesting thing about Voyager is Voyager straight up validated Native American tradition because remember, Janeway has a spirit animal. Yeah, what was it? A slug or something? Salamander, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. She turned. She turned into one. Yeah. <laughs> or what? I mean, it was like a newt, some kind of little lizard. Yeah. 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 You know, but I, you know, here's the weird thing about it. I, I I have every confidence in the idea that if they wanted to have back in the in the original TNG run an Islamic character, they would have certainly had. You know, one on there that that had to had to face Mecca, you know, a couple times a day, right? And but they would they would not have you know a Catholic would, or something, you know. How would you do that on a Star Trek traveling, you know, faster than the speed of light? Which direction is Mecca? Well, you'd have to go to stellar cartography and figure yeah. out which way you need to be facing, and generally you'd have to face Earth, <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, find find a find a location, maybe a or zero grav you, room or something. Well. Or you could punch up one of the three holy mosques or some mosque in one of the nations. Well, they don't they don't face a mosque, they face Mecca. That's a specific city on earth. So I know. I mean yeah. they could make a facsimile on a holodeck of a that city an on earth and face Mecca from that direction that that would actually kind of be an it could be an interesting story that they could have written in was like if they did have a, a practicing muslim on the enterprise would they have to utilize holodeck time five times a day and like all the muslim crew members would have to at the, those particular times go to a certain holodeck in order to if they wanted to do their prayer facing a holographic mecca yeah but they resolved that issue simply by having you know, all pretty much all of humanity be atheist by by yeah. the 24th century so i mean they were able to skirt that i kind of like that they did the, discuss um, they did discuss link. um I, I like that they did discuss religious issues with alien religions as an allegory i thought that was a good way to go that way you weren't going to offend any potentially offend anybody yeah. you know by using you know real world religions hey, now, i don't know I don't know if there are any native american groups that had a problem with chakotay's you know oh there were so because they I remember there was some that were saying that they have it all wrong. <laughs> yeah. What do y'all think of the um, election? Do y'all think Buddhists might win? Uh, I don't think so. That's quite I, a segue there, Admiral. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't think there's a chance, no. quite frankly. I, I, I think what that, about if he runs as Biden's VP? I don't, quite frankly, looking at the current field, I think that we've pretty much guaranteed a second Trump term. I mean, I, and, and I'm not endorsing Trump, but I'm just saying that, I mean, if you look at the current field of Democrats, uh, there's no there, there's nobody that can 
really compete with. Yeah, them. by the way, I did link the um, video finally found it in private chat. Once the stream's over, y'all can um, watch it and give me your opinion. This is from the CBS archives. Does anyone want it? I'm going there right now, actually. Yeah. That's the... That's the... the uh... But it gives you the opinion of one of the... Um, yeah, that's not under saying I hate gays. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's what I was talking about before. That's a, the, the renegade cut thing where they try to make Burnham out to be a right-wing nut. So, and, and Cheshire, Greg, you, you know this topic well. <laughs> so, what was it? Did they spin something that they said? or As far as this, this particular documentary? Uh, th this clip that well i i'd have to see I, I don't know where exactly he's talking about in the clip i mean i'd have to watch all 33 minutes of it to <laughs> I, I mean admiral do you have a time stamp for when he's uh no i can't remember when exactly it was oh shit i think i just had it hold on but uh a admiral uh you've been jumping topics a little bit and Sorry. Which was sometimes it's all right, but like the rest of the group has to be on board of what topic <laughs> we want to talk about. Right. And we're way <laughs> off your topic. Gays to <laughs> Trump winning the election. And... Sorry. And we're way I haven't had my full cup of coffee up. yet, so I jump around a lot when I first wake up. By the way, I've been one of your followers, Michael, ever since. You popped up on YouTube. Well, I appreciate that. I know you've been around for a long time, Admiral. Are you and I about... send you all the cool gear. Yeah. Are, are you talking about just his anti trekker channel, or are you talking about before that when he was doing uh, Fat Overlords? And... Um, anti trekker and Rational Roundtable. Yeah. Although I go by my actual given name when I'm watching Rational. Let me see. I'm trying to find. There's a lot of quotes in here, but yeah, I first discovered so far is where he talks <laughs> read, about how his attitude yeah. changed. Just read between the lines. He doesn't say it right out, but the way they intone it, well, it makes now, it sound he like he's against the gay. But community. then you can't say that the guy said that if you're reading between the lines. That's that's not yeah. Me. Yeah, you got to read the lines, not not <laughs> not not between the lines. There would be a big difference if I if if I said I hate the gay community and if if or if I said I don't happen to agree with their stances. There, see, you could see the big difference there. <laughs> yeah, if I if I came on and I said I hate white wine spritzers, somebody could say read between the lines. He doesn't like gay people, you know, or something <laughs> like that. You know, right. that's what you're doing. But and and it's like it's just like and that's a problem right now in the debate over Trek because right now people aren't even talking about Trek. They're talking about you know oh you must hate this group or that group because you don't like this show, uh, or you must be in favor of this group or that group because you like this show or some other you know everything's an agenda, and maybe some people just don't think that Discovery is well written. And it has nothing to do with the gender or race of Michael Burnham. And but instead, everybody's got to read between the lines and determine that what's the real motivation. Well, maybe the real motivation is Michael Burnham's a horrible character. And, and same with the Star Wars franchise. I wanted a female lead, but I wanted a good written character female lead. And I don't think Ray was well written. Right. But as far as Burnham, you know, I, I don't know. I, I've never been a big fan of his, but I've also never been a big detractor of him either. Might be the last five minutes of the clip.
Yeah, I, I uh, for many years I held it against uh, Berman that he uh, went on Sci-Fi Buzz. This is right around the time that uh, Star Trek Generations came out, and of course, as we all know today, they reused footage of a bird of prey exploding in in, in Generations from the previous film. Yeah, and he lied and, about that. <laughs> yes, he went on Sci-Fi Buzz and said, "I don't know what these people are talking about. We used all new footage." And of course, you know, people kind of <laughs> well, they color correction. Yeah, and then and then you know, obviously, when people can put the footage into their computers years later, they can they can compare the two, and yeah, it's the same shot. But you know, he he was trying to save tickets. Basically, he was out there kind of doing damage control for a cost cutting measure. And uh, you know, I, I've forgiven him for that, obviously, but for a while there, I didn't. You know, I'm like, oh, this guy sucks. He lied to us. You know, he. It would have been funny if they had two cameras record the same model blowing up and they used, you know, camera A for one movie and camera B for the next. Well, I have no doubt that they have done that on occasion. Um, You know, uh, why why not use more than one camera? You know, it is funny in um, every vessel in Star Trek that is named Enterprise has met a horrible fate. From the original Enterprise being blown up in um, number two, no, num- Star Trek three, then the A being basically screwed up from the get go before they could even leave space dock, none of the doors work. So are you saying like the Enterprise in general is kind of like has a curse? Uh, has, <laughs> it, it's the hero ship, but it also is doomed. <laughs> yeah. Well, and look at well, the the Enterprise B got struck by the Nexus ribbon. Then the Enterprise C died in combat with Romulan. But, but the but Enterprise the, D died in combat with the um, Dura sisters. We don't know about the Enterprise E yet, but I have a feeling they will reveal that it's um, no longer around, lost in the line of service, and there's the Enterprise F, which would be a Odyssey variant. You got a funny point here. Um, like it, out of universe, we know why it, it brings it brings kind of drama and action to see the hero ship get damaged or destroyed. But in universe, it might be funny. Like uh, Darren, how would you feel if you're being assigned to a ship and its previous you know incarnations have all been destroyed? For- well, it is a name is just a name, but yeah, that's how superstitions can kind of form. It's 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 right. uh, funny that way. I mean, there are certain names that the U.S. Navy will never use for for ships, uh, names like Scorpion and Thresher and things like that, because the names are associated with tragedy. What was that um, Navy ship that went down with all five Sullivan's brothers on it yeah, during sh- World War Two? Yeah. And after that, they made sure that would never happen again, even in peacetime, that policy still stands. Yeah, the uh, the Sullivan brothers were all stationed on a ship, a light cruiser called the USS Juno. And because that entire family was basically wiped out, all five brothers were serving on the same ship together, the Navy instituted a policy where they don't put siblings on ships anymore unless you get special permission from basically from yes. Congress. Yeah. Special dispensation, it's right. called. Yeah. That's kind of like the same private. And it's called the sole or... survivor policy. Right. The, the, in fact, the Sullivan's are mentioned in saving private Ryan as a, you know, in, as a sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's mentioned in the conversation when the, the higher ups are deciding to go and get, get uh, Ryan out of there. So. Well, also when you think about that, it, that one policy translated over to every other branch in the U.S. and to our allies in their armed services. Yeah, I think about that situation every once in a while, the idea that that, that mom got all five telegrams the same day. 
you know. Man, that would be horrible. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, in, in my family, that actually happened because in World War II, my dad was still on home defense in, in Winnipeg, which basically means he's going to the bar every night, as he put it. Um, but he was set to be shipped out, and um, basically his mom flipped because all of his brothers were already overseas. And suddenly he went from my dad being shipped out to my dad being honorably discharged uh, for not passing a physical. And as my dad put it, he says, I was in the best physical condition of my life at that point. But yeah, he, he got quietly removed out of the, uh, uh, out of the military because uh, his mom went out and flipped out because all of our other boys were already overseas. Yeah, occasionally you'll you'll see that where somebody gets a, an other than an, a, 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 a it's not called an honorable discharge, but it's sometimes called an other than honorable discharge, which doesn't carry the penalties of a dishonorable discharge. But they'll they'll, they'll get them out for political reasons, you know. Yeah, yeah because something. no country wants to see an entire family line wiped out. So, so Luke, uh, your comment. Uh, it's a matter of captains when they when they're on bo uh, board their ship, the plot armor. Oh, when they're not on board, the plot armor doesn't extend to their ship anymore, and then it dies. <laughs> One thing I could never wrap my head around is yesterday's Enterprise. I mean, seriously, the ship. The in previous Enterprise comes back in time, but um, who plays Yar? Denise Crosby. Yeah, Crosby goes back in time, and yet the only one who is aware of this crap is Guinan, and what drives me crazy is she did not inform Picard after everything straightened up with the timeline, especially after when they first meet Sela. Well, she, she does go up to Picard and says, the news travels fast. I hear that Tasha Yar's daughter is on the other ship. And Picard says, well, I think they're just, you know, they're, they're just trying to fake us out. And he, he, she tells him, no, she was on that ship 30 years ago. She was, you know, and, uh, and uh, she can't be any more specific than that. And so, but he trusts her, so he goes with that information. And in his first, uh, in his first little interview with Sila, he uses that to try to, I don't know, gain some emotional advantage over her, since you know initially she has the advantage because she looks like Tasha Yar. Yeah. By the way, one quick thing, and, and it's kind of odd, but just thinking about the whole thing about the Enterprise being cursed, I would say be more likely to say that the Constitution class is cursed because you know we know that in the original series it said there were 12 constitution class ships now i know the enterprise was was destroyed when uh confronting commander krug the exeter was wiped out by disease in the omega glory the defiant was wiped out by the tholian interspace the intrepid was destroyed by a space amoeba the excalibur was destroyed by the enterprise itself and the constellation was destroyed by the doomsday machine how did That's half of them right there how was the um, Excalibur destroyed by the, in the Enterprise? In the Ultimate Computer, uh, the M5 destroyed the Excalibur. The oh, other yeah. Ships, All the hands. Were da damaged, but the Excalibur was actually declared dead. There was no sign of life on the ship. So, the yeah, I remember the M5 kind of went overboard. Yeah. Somewhat in fried every living being inside. Yeah, the well they ship. scanned the ship they scanned the ship after the initial battle and the M five could detect no life aboard the Excalibur. And after that you know, it doesn't make that episode does not make sense anymore since you think about it this way. If the Federation had advanced technology like that back 10 years before um, 
Kirkwood's around, why weren't they using it? Goes back to Discovery, right? Well, that's a that's a problem with Discovery's writing. Is the Discovery, uh, it, and 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 I know a lot of fans have been pissed off about it. Is the simple fact that uh, in Discovery, they they don't take into account any of the canonical information from any other Trek series, and so they have Lorca having a Gorn in his closet, quite literally, a decade before the Gorn have ever been encountered by the Federation. But they led later explain that off as Lorca's not from our universe. If he they didn't bring a Gorn with him. If they would have put uh, Discovery after Kirk's timeline or even after, you know, next gen timeline, it would have saved them a lot of problems. Yeah. And I mean, the, the problem is, and I, I actually, it's funny, I've been talking to someone about this because really these little, the canonical issues and the superficial issues with Discovery are uh, the same as like canonical issues and superficial issues with Picard. They're all what um, I'm trying to lean to is in so Discovery, they have the um, automated SIPs, like they are in the M5 incident. Mm -hmm. It should have been in the history, considering like. Seven episodes before this episode, they in mention a ship named Discovery. Right, but the but the point is that Discovery is where the error is, not in the original series, because Discovery is the one they're the ones that wrote it after the fat, creating a retcon. Right. At at uh, I hate to cut this this conversation short, uh, but I do have to get going. But if anyone else wants to host their own stream. Using StreamYards, we can keep this conversation going. Actually, I need to get ready for work anyway, but I'm sure Bird wow. wants to say something before you wrap up since he came on. And Good luck with your work today, I'm, Mike. I'm, I'm, I'm right. sorry, Full Metal, that I see you in the background. I couldn't get you up on here. I'm actually going to be finishing and just uh, not be able to go on in two more minutes anyway. Just coming uh, on to say hello. So, so, so we're gonna have a Bird of Prey five stream soon, right? No, no, I won't no. be streaming for at least a couple of hours. So, uh, Bird will be streaming for the next two hours. That's what he just said. <laughs> <laughs> Take come, care. Come on, at. Okay, so, uh, Ramley Canuck or or anyone else, if you want to uh, get your own stream going, we we can we can hop over to another channel and keep this conversation going if you guys want. Nah. Yeah, I, I might be going live soon, but I, I got to restart the computer and <laughs> so it or, doesn't die out on me. <laughs> or, or see full metal in the background if you want to get hey, your. Hey, Canuck, how often do you have to um, reboot your computer? At least once a day. I want to thank everyone for showing up. Uh, thank you guys who hopped on the stream. You know, that's the yeah. topic jumped around a little bit, but. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Where did y'all you get the name Canuck from? It's it's a Canadian thing. <laughs> this is a nickname for Canadians. It's Canuck. So so does your name mean like rambling Canadian, basically? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Which makes sense. I mean, think about it, he's one of like seven Canadians that have internet. <laughs> That's a common I, misconception. <laughs> but I, I, I actually liked your original topic, Wesley. It's too bad we couldn't stay on it. <laughs> I don't even know what the original topic was. <laughs> what was the original topic? Well, we were all supposed to get to know each other better. <laughs> Instead of what, Star Trek. <laughs> hey, I don't blame me for that one. It was Star Trek by the time I came on board. Uh -huh. Nice to meet Star you, Trek's full metal photographer. Good, good to meet you. Our good Apple's fan. better than Windows. <laughs> I use both. <laughs> so, this is uh, my portable graphic workstation and video editing station. Nice. 
So yeah, you game just, on Windows, I take it. I don't play games, unfortunately. <laughs> I do a lot of video editing and uh, photography and graphics. So I use uh, Windows for like a, a machine called uh, a TriCaster for doing heavy duty streams for like sporting events and so. Oh, new tech. Yeah. I use I, I was a big new tech fanboy for a while. I had Lightwave that I really liked for the for three D. Yeah, new tech I like, but the problem is when the machine goes down, everything goes down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I am wrapping right. up. So you guys have a good one. Thanks for having the show on, Wes. Nice to meet you, photographer. Have a good one, Admiral Saval and Rambling Canuck, my pain brother. Have a good one, my friend. You too. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, friends, and I'm going to end it here. Have a great Sunday. Take her easy. See you.